Welcome to Sacred Wandering with Kira Brinton. My friend, this is a corner of the world where time stops, where the noise in our minds quiet, where we have soft hearts and we open our palms and we ask. This is a place where we receive. I invite you to join me as we wander through the sacred together. Welcome to Sacred Wandering. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I wanna invite you to come and sit with me right here, right now for a place of peace, a place of listening, a place of asking, and a place of inspiration. I want to remind you that you can always ask and receive answers, that you are the antenna, you are the one that connects directly to God, that it is you that can receive the answers that you so deeply need. Oftentimes, we are taught to get all of the answers from the outside, We are taught to go to the doctor and ask the doctor how to heal us. We are taught to ask our teachers. We hire mentors. And though these are all important, thank you, God, for doctors. (laughs) Thank you for teachers. Thank you for mentors. But where it gets sticky is when they become God. When we believe that they have the answers and that we can't find them on our own. There's a beautiful mixture between asking for support, learning from those who know more than you, but always trusting that you are the captain of your ship and that you receive the answers for you. And that's what we're doing in these morning practices is we're strengthening your muscle to receive. We're strengthening your ability to hear God. And if you do this every day, and then use this muscle for any time that you need an answer, you will be guided, you will be directed, and your life will actually have more clarity. Because instead of trying to figure it out in your mind, instead of trying to go outside of you and get the answers that other people think you need, you are going directly to source to receive the answers that you so need. So today... I'm going to read to you one of my sacred messages that I received. It was, it came to me during a very dark time. I have those quite a bit. (laughs) As we do, as we do. And this was such a powerful message for me. So I invite you to hear the message within the message, meaning that I hear the words that I say. But I want you to listen to the message that's for you. These are the words. From the bottom of a pit, the light above seems dim, small, and it may feel as though there's only a small amount. The truth is, the light is expansive and without borders, but the viewpoint is what determines your experience with that light. Trust that there is more light than you can ever imagine. As your viewpoint changes, you will experience the fullness. Mm, It's so beautiful. This time as I read it, I want you to really let the words soak into your body. Allow these words to teach you whatever it is that you need to be taught. From the bottom of a pit... The light above seems dim, small, and it may feel as though there's only a small amount. The truth is, the light is expansive and without borders, but the viewpoint is what determines your experience with that light. Trust there is more light than you can ever imagine. As your viewpoint changes, you will experience the fullness. Mm. 
This was such a reminder to me that during that day of darkness, God was reminding me, hey, it's only dark because of the viewpoint that you have. The light never goes anywhere. Just the way we see it does. And so today, if you're in a place of fear or darkness or whatever it is where you feel as though there is no light, I invite you to ask God to help you shift your viewpoint. I invite you to deepen your trust that there's more light than you could ever imagine. And that right now, just because of where you're standing, you can't see it. And so you can ask God to help you change your location. Hey God, how do I change my location? How do I have a different viewpoint? How do I see more light? How do I allow myself to be in more light? The best part about light is that dark dissipates in the presence of it. It dissipates in the presence of it. And it's so interesting because when we feel stuck, when we feel stagnant, when we're in that dark spot, we feel as though it's going to last forever. It's just the illusion of darkness. It's not truth. It's the illusion that keeps us stuck. But if we trust that it will pass, or we trust that we can move to a new location, well, then the fear and the darkness dissipates because it can't exist within more light. So every time things get hard for me, I just trust, I trust that it's going to pass. And I always know that when something really hard is happening, it's on the brink of a huge breakthrough, if I believe that. Now, if I believe that the darkness is real, if I believe that everything is falling apart, if I believe that my life is in shambles, well, then that's what happens. You see, we get what we expect. We get what we expect, meaning that when I have hard things happen, I expect that something great is on the other end. That is my deepest expectation. That when resistance is coming at me, I expect it's because I have a wild amount of success just about to roll around the corner. When I am in the depths of despair, I expect that a breakthrough beyond measure will be showing up. This is what I expect. And so this is what I get. You get what you expect. So if the world is crumbling and you believe it, and you believe that everything bad happens and that no good will come, well, you will get what you expect. We are that masterful in our power of our magnets, the magnets that live within us. We are so masterful that we get what we expect. So today, if the viewpoint in which you are seeing life has caused you to see only darkness with a tiny bit of light peeking through, I invite you to ask that God can help you shift your view. I invite you to ask God to help you shift what you are expecting. It's as simple as one little shift that changes the course of a train. Isn't that interesting? We just have to shift one thing on the train track and the train goes a completely different direction. We didn't even have to stop the train. It just changes it. Imagine it being that easy for you. Imagine that just one little shift can actually change the trajectory of where you're going. So today as we drop in and we go into the place of asking with God, I invite you to ask whatever you need in this moment. I want you to listen to it. I need you to hear it and trust that the first thing that you hear or see is exactly what you need to ask. I want to help you build trust with your own inner knowing I want to help you build trust that you know exactly how to talk to God and that you know exactly how to receive. So right here, we're going to take a nice deep breath in, straight into the heart, softening it, opening it. Imagine this golden honey moving through the heart, out through the arms, into the palms of the hands. I want you to imagine that you are in the most beautiful place of receptivity, that you are open to hear. And I'm going to be quiet while you ask your question to God 
and while you listen and receive. Remember, whatever you see, hear, feel, put into your prayer book. If you can't see, hear, or feel anything, you're going to put your pen to the paper and you're going to see the words that come out of your hands. Take a nice breath in and listen. I invite you to take a nice deep breath in. Allow these words to move into the body, shifting and changing the cellular makeup inside of you. I want to thank you for taking the time today to ask and to listen and to do. And as always, I thank you for wandering into the sacred with me. And I will see you in our prayer corner tomorrow morning. My love, thank you. Thank you for joining me in my prayer corner. Thank you for being a seeker. Thank you for being willing to have a soft heart, to open your palms, to ask, and then listen. But may I remind you that it is better to not ask than to ask and not do. So as you meet me here in the sacred, as you build your muscles of receiving, my invitation is this, whatever you hear, you do. For it is in the space of deep faith and inspired action that we call forth miracles. And may we create the sacred here on earth to the miracles that we bring.